Barry, you should put that quote in your pocket for future use. We were at where we were at with some numbers and other things. Yeah. That might work out for you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> listen, yeah. I, listen, you know, um, I, I feel like I, I've, that's the kind of, you know, uh, back in my single days, you oh. know, when I would when I would get caught, you know, yeah, uh, you nice. know, single juggling, days juggling, in East Lansing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the East Lansing disaster. Yeah. yeah, and there was also one night in Buffalo um, <laughs> that I don't want to talk about, but uh, yeah, you know, just like yeah, well, sorry, it was a numbers game. I sort of got caught. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry and Lawrence, J Lawrence Jackson. No Jay Croucher. Jay is out on a betcast. Jay will be missed. A boondoggle. Jay's out on a boondoggle. Call it what it is. Jay's not here doing his job. Jay's like literally doing a betcast. And do you know what a betcast is? Betcast is literally familiar. like, here's where you, that's what you do is where you watch a game and you're a degenerate, which is basically Jay's real life, just there's a camera in front of him. It's basically that's the same thing. The only thing that would make the betcast more realistic to Jay's life is as if there was a three-year-old girl running I was around. Waiting for it, right? But other than that, <laughs> that's literally what Jay does every day of his life. So anyway, Jay drinks free somehow uh, along today, with J.K. Dobbins. Uh, along with J.K. Dobbins, I feel bad for J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, man. Not only, Definitely. not only is he out for the year, of course, but let's be clear, like. He's, he ruptures his Achilles. Like, it's an awful injury. This is a poor kid that is, like, since he's come out of college, has just been um, injury after injury after injury. Awful injury, especially for running back. He's out for the season. And then, whatever, a handful of hours later, Aaron Rodgers has a similar injury, and no one's talking about J.K. Dobbins. It's all about what do the Jets do without Aaron Rodgers. No one's bat. talking about what are the Ravens. The New York Giants. Yes. That's new, true. The, no one's talking about the Giants. That's a good point. It works <laughs> out sometimes differently. Yeah, it goes yeah, both yeah. Ways. So, J.K. Dobbins, we're sorry. You get to drink free. Giants fans, you stayed out of the headlines. Lawrence, <laughs> welcome back, by the way. Appreciate it, Great man. Great to see you. What's going on? It's Wednesday, man. It's, it's, it's hump day. It's only right that I show up on hump day That's right. here. Uh, let me just give a quick little special shout-out mm. to my youngest daughter, Amani. Oh. Today is your sixth birthday, and I know you watching this right now because your mama let you take off school. Ooh. So happy birthday, uh, happy and birthday. I love you. <laughs> there happy we birthday. I love to see it. You know what? Uh, it is because you are, like me, a girl dad. Yes, indeed. And uh, your daughter's watching today that I will not bring up uh, the fact that it's an upset that you're back here after your Hunter Renfro over Jacoby yeah, Myers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't talking about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah we but we will. We but we will. will. <laughs> we'll talk It'll find its way back. That's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, happy birthday to your daughter, my friend. Uh, lots to get to. Yes, lots let's jump to right to. into the Roto World player news. Of course, for all of your player news, go to NBCSports.com. And we're going to start with Kenneth Gainwell, who did not practice Tuesday due to a rib injury. And why this is noteworthy, guys? Well, because quite simply, the Eagles play Thursday night football yeah. against the Vikings. Yeah, sure. So we are up against the clock right now, Barry, when it comes to Kenneth Gainwell, who far and away led this Eagles backfield in week one. 62% of team snaps, 82% of the team's running back touches as well. DeAndre Swift only gets a couple of touches in this one. Boston Scott gets, I think, one carry, and Rashad Penny was a healthy scratch. Now, after the game, Nick Sirianni did say something to the effect of, like, I don't want to be in a game where DeAndre Swift only gets two touches. Um, but on the other hand, like, you are the head coach. So at some point, you know, like, it's on you. Uh, ultimately, the expectation here is, especially given that he's dealing with a, uh, a rib injury, it's a short week on Thursday night against the Vikings. So certainly, DeAndre Swift will get more run on Thursday night. We'll see if Gainwell is active. Again, he, yeah. he, he quote unquote, did not practice yesterday. Now, they didn't practice on Tuesday because it's a short week, so it's an estimation. Right. But in essence, had the Eagles practiced on Tuesday, Gainwell would not have been out there. We'll wait to see what the reports are, but I would certainly expect a lesser workload for Gainwell or potentially him not being active on Thursday night, which means DeAndre Swift in a decent matchup against Minnesota could be, to be potentially useful this week. I would like Swift a lot if game were, were to miss, but let's talk Rashad Penny here, who was a healthy scratch real quick in week one. How do you feel about him uh, if he's able to get active this week? Because if, if game was not playing, you got or, – or would they just run? Because we really don't know, especially how the Eagles, hey, you know, how they operate. Boston Scott. Boston Scott here. Here, what I would say is, is that I wouldn't mind picking up Rashad Penny. We've seen the upside. We've seen him dominate, you know, 
that that two years ago in Seattle, the final six games, like he was as good a running back as there is in fantasy. Right. I just – it's hard for me to go – you got you were a, literally a healthy scratch. Yeah. Like the, Nick Sirianni a week ago thought there were three guys on the team that were better that the team was better off with you not active on the roster to go from that to all of a sudden him in my fantasy lineup. Doesn't mean the Eagles wouldn't suddenly give him 20 touches because it's the Eagles and you never know. It's this running back by committee. Um, anything is possible on Thursday night. Honestly, the only Eagle running back that I would be comfortable starting on Thursday night would be DeAndre Swift, Swift and that's yeah. only if Kenneth Gainwell is inactive. If, he, yeah. if he's out for this game, then I would feel comfortable starting Swift. If he is, if Gainwell is active, then I think it's a situation to avoid because we're not going to know how much run Gainwell will get. Swift will also get more run. It's going to be a little bit of a committee. Honestly, yeah. Jalen Hurts put up a stinker against the Patriots. I think this is a big Jalen Hurts game. I think yeah, prime back. time game. Game. He Vikings knows it was too? bad That's against the, big thing. Against the Vikings. Too? I absolutely. I think this is a big Jalen Hurts game. I think it's a, you know. Devontae Smith didn't have a big game. Uh, D- Dallas Goddard got a goose egg. Goose egg. I think this is, especially by the way. For, he look, only threw I, for 170. Dude, Baker, they made, the Vikings defense made Baker Mayfield look, you know, <laughs> cop. Uh, look so, D- he look, yeah, he got so, the W too. Exactly. So, <laughs> j- so it, it'll be a great game on Thursday night. Uh, you know, two teams that really need to win this game. Eagles are 1-0, but don't feel good about it. Vikings obviously 0-1. They feel gr- horrible about it. Uh, but Jalen Hurts, after all the talk, and the big contract in the offseason, that's my expectation yeah. is that it'll be a big Jalen Hurts game. More injury news here, Lawrence. This one more significant, Deontay Johnson dealing with a hamstring injury. He's expected to miss multiple weeks. Now, the Steelers, they play Monday Night Football against the Browns, and we know how much Kenny Pickett in this passing offense struggled, even with Deontay Johnson available for most of that game. I mean, not only where do they go from here, but what can you expect from the Steelers pass catching group without him? Well, you hope something decent because they're going from the 49ers to the to the Cleveland Browns who just dominated uh, Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Again, this Cleveland Brown defense is not the same. New defensive lineman was already good on the back end, so they're in for something here. George Pickens should, should see an uptick. He ran the most routes amongst any Pittsburgh wide receiver in week one and he said something he he liked the comment or something about uh you should give George Pickens more touches he he liked the comment so you know and you know he a dog so he wanted to get the ball too so look for him to get more involved he should see more targets and catches and yards but overall the passing game is gonna be tough against Cleveland I agree. I agree with everything you just said, Lawrence. By the way, nice job on uh, doing the social media investigation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What he's a lot. What he's like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lawrence is scrolling through TikToks and Instagrams to bring you the latest <laughs> hey, fantasy I information. The fans, though. I ain't the fans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, look, I, I pick into 31. So he's my highest ranked wide receiver this week uh, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He did have seven targets last week. Was the second most on the team, but. Look, with Johnson off the field, only three targets for 17 yards. Again, it was a tough, tough game. I don't know, you know, Kenny Pickett got his bell rung a little bit there. and yeah. I, I, So, yeah, I don't want to speculate there, but just definitely wonder um, uh, how, how uh, Kenny Pickett was feeling here. This is, a, this is an intense defensive line. Game's in Pittsburgh, which I think is helpful. Uh, Cleveland comes there, but there's no question about it. The Browns are a very real defense, which is why I have Pickens at 31. Like, if you're starting a Steelers wide receiver this week, I think it's George Pickens, but I do think given the matchup, you have to sort of lower expectations. Worth noting that Calvin Austin had six targets in week one. Four of them came when Deontay Johnson was off the field, so maybe you see Calvin Austin more involved there. The, what the concern here is if Calvin Austin gets more involved, that's going to move Allen Robinson out of the slot to the outside, and I have a lot less confidence in Allen Robinson on the outside than I do, you know, uh, at this stage of his career, matched up against a linebacker in the slot. I feel better about that matchup than I do uh, Allen Robinson on, uh, on the outside. I did, I did rank him this week. My wide receiver, 48. He did have eight targets in week one. Seven of those did come from the slot, though. And Calvin Austin's such a small guy, he can't play outside. No, it's just not going to happen. He's probably more of a gadget guy and is going to split reps in the slot. So I totally agree with you there, Barry. Two more player But news. it is worth noting, if, like, if you're in a slightly deeper league, I do think Allen Robinson is worth grabbing and stashing just to sort of see. Two more bits of uh, player news, injury-related, of course, here. Greg Dulcich dealing with a hamstring injury. He's expected to miss multiple weeks. I know we mentioned Adam Trotman on yesterday's show. And then talk about a backfield getting thin here, Barry. Evan <laughs> Hole 
Hull, the rookie running back for the Colts, he's placed on IR with a knee injury. They're running out of bodies in that backfield. Yeah, they activated Jake Funk. They, you know, they not only brought in the noise, they brought in the funk. There we go. The funk. And, and there you go. It's funky. He, he called it that. It's funky God bless. right there. Two Colts. shows on Sunday. Colts, uh, figure it out with Jonathan waitresses. Taylor. The Jaguars did not fear the running game at all outside of Anthony Richardson. Get it right with the guy you already got in the building. Much respect to Zach Moss and Jake Funk and whoever else, but they ain't no Jonathan Taylor. Make it right. I would agree, but it, even if they do make it right, and I think they're a long way off from that, yeah. there's still three more games before he's even eligible to play. Yeah. So, uh, look, Deion Jackson got a ton of run. I think he'll continue to get a bunch of run, at least because he's the passing down back. That was one thing that Hull brought to the table, that he that he's not going to be available. But Zach Moss was a late scratch, but he did practice somewhat. I grabbed Zach Moss in a couple of deeper leagues just because I think there's a chance that Deion Jackson didn't do anything against the Jaguars no. in week one that no. made you think like, okay, you can be the guy until JT comes back. And so yeah. he got a lot of run, but he didn't wasn't super effective. So I think Zach Moss has an opportunity. I think he'll be active this week, and I think he has an opportunity to, wait for it, run away with his job. He Again, did. He, he did. Thank like, you very he, much. He, God he's bless. done better with Two it than Deion Jackson Tip has. Tip your so There you go. Try the curly fries. There we go. We'll get <laughs> some right. specials. Anyway, in just but a bit. yeah. So anyway, I just that's all I was gonna say. It's like if you're desperate for running back, it'll be a bit of a committee. But I'll have, uh, you know, I think Moss. I prefer Moss to Deion Jackson this week. Some notable injuries we're tracking. These aren't updated injury news, but more injuries we've known about here. Of course, Travis Kelsey at the top there. Lawrence, when you look at this list, though, who jumps out to you that could maybe come back and make an impact getting healthy? Uh, I think Jerry Judy, man. Uh, in week one, the Broncos, they didn't start off as bad as they did last season, but it wasn't like they was lights out on offense. And we even talked about it last week, feeling like Cortland Sutton had a chance to be a, a top 20 receiver. He did score the touchdown but he only had 32 receiving yards on four receptions. So that makes way for Jerry Drew to come in if he's healthy and to reclaim that uh, number one wide receiver spot. I mean, all these guys, I mean, listen, Kelsey and Andrews, we hope they're back. We hope it doesn't look like Christian Watson's going to be back this week, but hopefully he gets there sooner. Uh, Jacoby Myers, hopefully, you know, he clears the, clears the protocol and is ready to play because I think he's legit. Yeah. I do think he's legit. Uh, same with Tyler Lockett. We're hoping he – the other one that's interesting, though, is Devontae Parker, right? It, to me, that's the interesting one because I'm a Kendrick Bourne believer. K Devontae Parker had a great camp, and he was kind of a trendy sleeper for a few people there. But I actually, even when Parker comes back, give me Kendrick Bourne over Devontae Parker. I will say the Patriots really want him back. I mean, like, because there were some – there's some brutal plays out there opposite. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, like, Keyshawn Boutte, Boutte didn't have the best yeah, yeah. week one. Keyshawn Boutte you know, had just, a – Just rookie Played like stuff. a rookie. Rookie yes. stuff. You Played know, like get, a get, the, get the foot in a couple, a couple of times it happened and you'll be all right. Devontae Parker will do that. He will make those contested catches. And like you said about Kendrick Bourne, they had a good game passing-wise. Mac Jones had his best game in a long while versus a respected defense. So getting Devontae Parker back would just add to that, but I would prefer Kendrick Bourne as well. Yeah, they don't want Mac Jones uh, passing it over 50 times. but Definitely I, I, not. I put out this thing yesterday on Twitter called 10 Takeaway Tuesday. Something I'm trying, whatever, a little thread. Yeah, you're workshopping. Like, uh, I'm workshopping. Yeah. It, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, one of the one of my takeaways was the fact that the Patriots' offense is going to be competent this year. He's not going to pass it 50 times every. But like, unlike last year, where it was an unmitigated disaster, it is going to be competent this year under Mac Jones, under Bill O'Brien, and uh, both uh, Bourne and Devontae Parker uh, will have um, will have usefulness this year in that order. I think Hunter Henry is a legit tight end too. One thing I do want to say, however, here is that while the Patriots will have a competent offense, the 49ers have a great offense, have a great offense. And so everyone knows that when you're a big time NFL superstar you ha and you're doing the promotional circuit, you gotta stop by the happy hour. Um, Debo Samuel drinks free whenever he walks into the bar. Uh, he's a returning guest, a recurring guest, if you will. One of our favorites. Uh, yesterday, Jay and I sat down with Debo Samuel to talk to him about the 49ers offense and the difference between last year and this year. This year, it's clear this team is Brock Purdy's team. How is this offense different under Brock Purdy and specific to you in terms of your connection with Brock Purdy? Um, what's so crazy? I don't think it's, you know what I'm saying, too much different. We're running the same plays, same guys in the huddle. Um, um, but uh, I feel like, you know, uh, Brock's doing a really good job of 
being a leader that we need him to be, commanding the huddle, and just like the energy and all the stuff that he brings and kind of, you know what I'm saying, kind of piggyback off him. If you're a quarterback, it's like that. I mean, you have no choice but to be like it. So it, it kind of brings like a little swagger to the team that, you know what I'm saying, we have with just a little bit more. Yep. So towards the end of last season, Debo, I know you were injured a little bit when Brock Purdy became the starter, though you did have some massive playoff games with Brock. Do you feel like you have that continuity with him uh, at quarterback or do you think there's still room to grow there? Um, I feel like um, in this game, it's always room to grow. Um, you can never be satisfied with where you're at. Um, you always want to be better and better week in and week out, day in and day out. So I feel like, you know what I'm saying, we, get, we can always get better in every aspect. Uh, hey, Debo, curious, um, uh, Brandon Ayuk had a huge game on Sunday for the Pittsburgh Steelers. What have you noticed this year in terms of his growth as a player? Um, if you ask me, Brandon's been growing since he's been in the league. Um, and I've, I've, I've seen it firsthand and just, you know what I'm saying? The things that he's done, the thing that he's done this past Sunday, it didn't impress me. It didn't impress uh, anybody that's part of our team because that's like what we're used to. This is what we see um day in and day out through all throughout camp and OTAs it's just like that's just who Brandon is and um like I stated earlier it's kind of like I'm very excited for people to you know what I'm saying see what he's really capable of so guys in the spirit of us doing our show of course from the fantasy football happy hour bar I cooked up some bartender specials oh, for you, you there. today. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically yeah, yeah. you can give me a, a hard pass or you could say you know what I want that Order I'm, in on that, I'm in on that special. And in spirit Thank of having Debo yeah. on the show, let's stick with the Niners' explosive offense. Okay. Special number one today, Barry. Mm -hmm. Brandon Ayuk will score more fantasy points than Debo Samuel this year. Uh, yeah, I like that. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to buy that. Look, I, the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of Debo's fantasy production when he was elite came from the rushing, right? And that's going to be he – he got a couple of uh, carries uh, against Pittsburgh. However – with Chris McCaffrey there, that role has been limited. And in fact, over the second half of the year, now again, Debo was banged up, but Brandon Ayuk had more fantasy points than Debo Samuel. So we've seen this before. Again, there were some mitigating circumstances, but yeah, uh, I actually, and I said this in the preseason, that I preferred Brandon Ayuk at cost to Debo Samuel. So given the fact that he's already got a big lead, I think it's going to be close. Uh, but, yeah, I will buy that special. I, I like the idea. I do think Brandon Ayuk is a legit wide receiver, too, you know, for the rest of the season. I'm yeah, at wide receiver 17 yeah, this week. I, I think this is going to be really close, actually, much like it was last season. Both guys averaged over 13 fantasy points per game. Ayuk 13 and a half, Debo right at 13. And I'm going to go with that this year. So I, I, I'll take that special. Like Matthew said, he already has a huge lead. The only person to score more than him was the great Tyreek Hill. 28% target share in week one. So a legit wide receiver. And if the offense is operating like this, then I'm loving IU every single week. Yeah. Lawrence, I cooked up special number two just for you. It's your Atlanta <laughs> Falcons, all right? Bijan Robinson will have fewer touches than Tyler Algier for the second straight week. Not for the year, just for this week against the Chargers. All right, so I, I do have Bijan ranked a little lower this week. I got him at running back eight this week and have Tyler Algier ranked a little higher at running back 26 because he going he gonna to get him a touchdown. But I'm going to say no because – Week one, they were playing against the Panthers, rookie quarterback, young offense. This week, they're still playing against a young offense in Green Bay so and Green Jordan Bay. Love. Yep. But they looked a lot more established and, and played a lot better, albeit against the Bears defense. They looked a lot more polished. So for them to keep up with that, Bijan's going to have to be more involved. And you saw Bijan all over the formation last week running in motion while Algier was in the backfield. So I'm going to say Bijan has more touches, but Arthur Arthur Smith will hear me say this, and just because I said it, he going to make sure it don't happen. Lawrence, you and I are agreeing way too much. I completely agree with you. Uh, the fact of the matter is game script really worked for the Atlanta Falcons uh, in week number one where they were able to get both guys a bunch of touches. That was the first game of the season. And, like, I really think just, like, 
Arthur Smith is trying to hide his quarterback. That's that's really what he wants to do here. So you think about the Green Bay Packers who allowed the most targets and tied for the most receptions to opposing running backs in week one, even a game in which they were dominating. Like, I, again, I think the Packers offense is pretty good. And so that's what happened. The Bears had to throw it and they had to dump it down to the running backs. I think you'll see that a decent amount. So Bijan Robinson, who played 65% of the team snaps in week one, 63% of his touches came in the first half. Like, I, I think that... Uh, that they're, and he's their passing down back. They're just, you know, Algiers not a part of the passing game. So I think in a game in which game script won't allow them to run as much as they did against the Panthers, yes, they'll need to be throwing a little bit more. And I think they don't want him throwing downfield. I think they want him dumping off to Bijan Robinson. Yeah. So I have Bijan Robinson at running back six this week, Algier at running back 31. So I just, you know, again, 55% of his touches came in the fourth quarter. Uh, when they were, you know, they were, when they were winning, when they were, when they were winning, I still think I'm not, let me put it this way. Uh, I'll just be very clear about this. If I have Bijan Robinson, I am not panicking. No, if I no have, way. No if, way. If I have Drake London or, or Kyle Pitts, I am totally panicking. For more for who though, for Drake London or Kyle Pitts. I'm going to say for Drake London I would say Drake I, because, London. because, Kyle Pitt, first off, the, the, the bar to be a useful tight end in fantasy is so much <laughs> lower. So, exactly. but, but I mean, Drake, the where you drafted Drake London, like you gave up, like, right now. honestly, there are people that drafted Drake London ahead of Brandon Ayuk, right? For I mean, sure. I, I mean, you know, like there are, right? So like, Oof. you know, I mean, think about that, right? I mean, there's just, there's guys that you just don't feel good about, right? I mean, like, whatever. I mean, Drake London went ahead of like Zay Flowers. Drake London went ahead of, like, in some leagues, Tyler Lockett. Like, I mean, there's a, z- a lot of people where Drake London was a trendy sleeper for a lot of people, not for me. I literally have zero shares of Drake London, and it's no disrespect to Drake London, who I think is insanely talented. I just think he doesn't have a quarterback, and he's got a coach that wants to do two things, hide his quarterback, and more importantly, he can win that way. That's the thing that, that people aren't getting about this. For all the criticism of Arthur Smith, and I'm on, on that list. You and I, Lawrence, we had a lot of fun last year with Arthur Smith and free <laughs> Kyle Pitts. Lawrence literally wore a free Kyle Pitts yeah, shirt yeah. this past Sunday. <laughs> yeah. But in all seriousness, like, they won. They won. I mean, by, they won. By a lot. By a lot. Yeah. Like, I mean, for all of us, you know, like, the fact of the matter is, is that Arthur Smith's job is to win games for the Atlanta Falcons, and he won last week doing hiding his quarterback. Like, if you're Arthur Smith, why on earth would you go away from that? And so, game script may not allow him to do that. It but won't work this week. It won't work this week. But, like, he's going to need to be down 10 points before he starts throwing. He wants to stick to the run as much as possible. We're going to move special number two to the secret menu. Arthur Smith, you can come in and order that. Tyler Algier touches over Bijan. <laughs> we'll see. So our last one here, guys. Barry, Tajay Spears will play more snaps than Derrick Henry again in week two against the Chargers. No. I, I'm not taking that special. You can, <laughs> you can give that to the customers that complain or whatever. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not buying that at all. Like, it was weird, right? You know, look, here's the thing. He played 56% of the team snaps in week one. He played, this is Tajay Spears. He played on 83% of the snaps on third and fourth down. Okay, fine. Um, I don't think at home against the Chargers uh, that will be the case. After week one, Coach Vrabel said, quote, we need Derek, we're going to need Derek and everybody so we can figure out what we can do consistently. Consistently, Derek will be a huge part of that. I can assure you, it's his, he only had, he had 47% of the team snaps in week one. Last year, he had only one game uh, below a 50% snap rate last year. I think this is just a little bit game script dependent, maybe getting into it. Also, keep in mind, Ryan Tannehill was as bad as any quarterback in the NFL in week one. I don't expect that to continue as well. Like, I just, you know, the, the, the Dolphins had their way with the Chargers. Uh, you've got a West Coast team coming east for a 1 o'clock game. I think it'll be smoother sledding for the Tennessee offense. I don't think Tannehill will be nearly as bad, and I think they get back to riding King Henry. I'm not buying this at all. Yeah, I'm going to hit a cancel on this special too, Connor. Uh, Derrick Henry's actually my running back five for this week, so no can do. I'm all in on him this week. And I think, you know, he had the long reception against the Saints. So, you know, big guy, good, big guy, man, get him a little breather. And I think that just led to Tajay Spears just getting a little more reps than what they thought. As you could see, the touches didn't amount to that. So I'm going with Derrick Henry this week. I will say this, though. If – if Tajay Spears is still available in your league, love him as a stash.
Yeah, without a doubt. Okay, with that, we're going to take our first break. But when we're back, should you start or sit Christian Kirk? The answer next on Keep It Open or Close It Out. It's another bar thing, if you get that. <laughs> The toughest competition of the year is here. The biggest talents in men's rugby take the stage as 20 countries compete for 20 days of heart-pounding, hard-hitting action at the Rugby World Cup. Watch every match live on Peacock all the way through the final on October 28th, with games also available on CNBC. As promised, guys, keep it open or close it out. It's our bar variation of a little start-sit, maybe some players that are making you nervous, maybe some players. Because, see, what happens a lot of times when you go to a bar and you have a tab open, that well, to say the bartender will say to you, he'll say, like, hey, you want to keep this open? I mean, do you want to keep, keep the drinks coming? Or do you want to close it out? Do you want to close out your tab and leave, go somewhere else? Like, that's the premise of the show. That's the premise of the segment here. Because we're in a bar, you see. It's the yeah. fantasy football happy I've never been to one. This is the only bar I've ever been to. I understand Yeah, me that. too, me too, yeah, yeah. me too. We don't, yeah. we don't do that. So yeah. This is the only bar I've been to today. That's right. But in For fairness, now. it's 1230. It's For young. Now. That's right. Night is young. A lot of day left. Oh, yeah. And a lot of season left. Yes, sir. For Drake London, who we talked about earlier here, guys. Lawrence, I know, listen, you obviously watch the Falcons offense pretty closely. Barry was yeah, talking yeah. about how Drake London could be burning some people right now when you look at where he was drafted. Where is the concern level right now after that goose egg to kick off the season? Well, I got good news for Drake London, fantasy managers. He going to do better than what he did in week one. <laughs> that's, go. the, that's the good news because he had one Don't target, <laughs> one target, zero catches, zero yards, right? So um, Falcons only attempted 18 passes in week one. They're going up against Green Bay, who only allow eight receptions to those receivers. So for this week, Matthew, despite the fact that how you talk about Desmond Ritter as if Sam Howell is just so much better than him, when he's not, I'm still going to close it out for Drake London this week. If Drake London catches something like six catches for 80 yards like he did with Ritter last season, if he does something like that, then when he's on this segment next week, we'll keep it open. But for now, me and Desmond Ritter going to keep it closed. Yeah, I'm closing it out. He's my wide receiver 42. You've never, <laughs> left, a, you've never left a bar faster. <laughs> wide receiver, close it out. Keep, keep the change. Wide Mary receiver, I'm what? out. 42 for me. Yeah. 42. Not a time. There are 41 him. wide receivers I would rather have. I got him at 43. Well, I'm got, higher on Drake London than you. Hey, I got to right. keep it real. I got to keep it. I got to keep it 100 on the yeah, fantasy exactly. football Thank happy you. hour. Like I said, if he show us something like six for 80, because again. They're, they can't get away with what they did last week against the Panthers versus this Green Bay team if they want to win. Now, anything can happen, but I'm My out. point is, is that as long as if they get anywhere close, if they're within 10 points, they're running the ball. And then yeah. you think about, okay, what's this passing offense? Let's pretend they are passing. You've got London. You've got Pitts. You've got Bijan Robinson. There's an argument to be made, Lawrence, that Drake London, even, in a, even if they were passing, is the third option on that passing offense. I, I don't yes. know how it's going to be worked out, but there's a chance that Desmond Ritter yeah. feels more comfortable dumping it off to Bijan or looking for Kyle Pitts. Again, we didn't see that play out last That's, year, but, yeah. like, I, I, it's, it's really closed for me. Yes. I'm keeping it's it tough. closed, yeah. Can I, can I, I know it's so early to ask this. It's yeah. so early. But if there came a point early in the season where they flipped to Taylor Heineke, do you go back into the bar and give it one of more course, shot? Of course oh, he is. Yeah. Ta- Heineke was a commander. He loved his guy. Another bar. Heineke throws. Trump, Taylor, Heineke. I promise you. Heineke, Heineke so will look, throw the ball. He ain't scared to throw you, it. You telling me Heineke, this. Heineke this is ain't like a, F it. This ain't Drake about down there somewhere. You know why he on the bench? Because of that attitude. That's why he on the bench right now. Because Arthur Smith wants to run it. He's like, I don't want it. I don't want to ever throw it. It is 15 for 18 and 118 yards for a touchdown. Is that bad? <laughs> is that bad? It's bad for fantasy. Yes, yeah, that is true. <laughs> but it's not. I mean, that's that's that's. This is on Arthur Smith. This that, that's who your real beef is with. I know you want to like him, and you can. Mm-hmm. I have no. But he I, don't like us. I know. I have no beef with Arthur Smith. I do have a beef with uh, Drake London starting in any one of my <laughs> fantasy teams, which is not going to happen. Right, I, I have I, literally. I'm, I have 15 I fantasy teams too. this year, and I'm 0 for 15 in terms of having any Drake London shares. Again, it is not. It is not Drake's fault. It, it is. Uh, but. I just I don't believe this offense can support multiple viable pass catchers, 
and I would argue that Bijan Robinson is a viable pass catcher, He's along with up, obviously definitely. obviously with Pitts and Drake London. Let's move on. One offense that can support multiple pass catchers is the Jacksonville Jaguars, but one guy that was surprisingly not very involved no. week one was Christian Kirk against the Colts. Christian Kirk only three targets, one catch for nine yards. The Jaguars, of course, get the Chiefs in week two, and I mean, Barry, you see it right here. Monster uh -oh. return for Calvin Ridley. Real nice day for the forgotten Zay Jones. Mm -hmm. and there's Christian Kirk at the bottom there with not much going on. Keeping this open? One more uh, week? Well, so first off, right? I mean, he played only 61% of the snaps. Last year, never had a game below 75%. Again, we talked about this throughout the out season, that one off season, that uh, Ridley and Jones are going to be on the outside. Kirk's going to be in the slot. Okay. Now, uh, I'm at wide receiver 38 this, this week. So, I'm sort of going to split the difference here. If I'm in a standard league, I'm in a two, two wide, 10, 12 team, two wide receiver league, I'm keeping it closed. Uh, I'm, I'm closing it out, I should say. I'm closing it out. But if I'm in a 12 team, three wide receiver league or an even deeper league, I am going to keep it open on Christian Kirk. I do think better days are ahead. Just I will say this. Last year, uh, since the start of last year, no team in the NFL has allowed more receptions to the slot than the Kansas City Chiefs. That's who Jacksonville plays this week. They yeah. play KC. We saw what my ride or die, Amon Ross St. Brown, did to them on Sunday night. Like, again, Amon Ra had a huge game in the slot. Kirk versus the Chiefs last season. Okay? Remember, when he, again, it was different. They didn't have Ridley. But still, Week 10 last year against the Chiefs, Christian Kirk 9 for 105 and two touchdowns on 12 targets. I think he has a better game this week given the matchup and the fact that the Jaguars are going to have to throw more to keep up with the Kansas City Chiefs. So again, I'm at 38, so borderline. Depends on your league size to whether I'm keeping, uh, keeping it open or closing it out. Yeah, I'm going to close this out where there's one receiver. It, it had to be four starting receivers in the league for me to keep this open, so I'm keeping it closed, right? I actually have him at wide receiver 48 behind wow. Drake London, right? Wow, hey, look, you hate Christian Kirk with a fiery so, passion. No, it's not that I hate him. It's that boy Zay Jones who had a 23% target share compared to Christian Kirk's 6%. Now, what he did versus them last year is fine, and what your ride or die – Amon Ross St. Brown did to the Chiefs is fine, but Christian Kirk is no Amon Ross St. Brown. And Zay, <clears throat> and Zay Jones, is he's that guy. He was the guy in on two wide receiver sets. Christian Kirk right now, at least, with Calvin Ridley in the foe who's just dominating off the rip, um, he's, he's relegated to being a slot receiver for now. My only argument is, is that I think they go three wide a lot more against Kansas City than they did against yeah. the Colts. I mean, again, the Colts with Kenny Moore, they actually have a really good slot, great corner, slot corner, right? And so probably the best guy in their secondary. Yeah, I mean, for sure. so, yeah. so I think that as they game plan for Kansas City, Doug Peterson's going to say we need Kirk out there more. They didn't, they didn't want to put him out there as much against, against Kenny Moore, and it's why Lawrence probably wasn't looking the, the way. I understand what you're saying, Lawrence. Totally agree. Um, he's going to uh, do better, though, too, he, like yes. Dre London, because he had one reception for nine yards, so he definitely, yeah. he definitely doing better. I guess that, that's, that's my argument is I think, I think it will be a better – I don't think it will be a great day for Christian Kirk. Again, I'm at wide receiver 38, but yeah. I do think it will be a, a usable day for him in what should be a high-scoring game against the Chiefs. Over under 51, too. So, highest, the, highest of week two. Yeah, exactly. A lot of points expected in that one. And, listen, Jacksonville's best corner is Tyson Campbell. He plays on the outside, so a much tougher matchup for Calvin Ridley. We'll see how that one plays yep. out. Our next one here, Rashad White coming off just – a horrific week, guys. There's no way around it. One of the more inefficient weeks we've seen from a running back in quite some time. The good news for Rashad White is that the Bucks play the Bears, and Jordan Love had a pretty easy uh, week one against that Chicago defense, and a lot of teams did last year. So, you know, when you look at this one, Lawrence, a horrible start for Rashad White, but it feels like the Bucks aren't just going to move on to Sean Tucker right away. Do you ride this one out a little bit longer? Yeah, I'm going to keep this open. I got him at running back 19 this week. Like you just mentioned what the Packers did against the Bears. Uh, we saw what Aaron Jones did uh, against the Bears. And he, Rashad White may not perform to that tune, but they're sticking with it. You it, And running backs have days like these sometimes. Josh Jacobs only had 48 yards on 19 carries, so they keep chugging along. He had 19 touches in uh, week one. You got five carries from Sean Tucker. That's what a backup running back does. You had Chase Evans with two carries. That's what a backup backup running back does. So I'm going to keep it open for Rashad White and see what he do versus a defense that definitely gives it up. Now, I'm with you, Lawrence. I'm keeping it open as well. Bears allowed 185 yards from scrimmage and two total touchdowns to Packer running backs. Obviously, a lot of that was Aaron Jones. And so 
you mention it. Like, again, fantasy success comes from talent and opportunity. Jury's still out if Rashad White has talent. Like, he was really inefficient last week. Yeah. But he definitely has opportunity. It's not a matchup that scares you as well. So, uh, I'm keeping it open. He's my running back 15 this week. So, I'm as a solid mid-tier RB2 this week. Is it Sean Tucker, though, the guy that could be in the wings loading? Right now, undrafted so. free agent, who we've talked about a lot, but has a lot of talent. Has a lot of talent. You talked about it. Probably should have been a third-round pick. For sure. Uh, if it wasn't for the, the, concern, the medical concerns. But those have all been cleared up. He was great at Syracuse. Syracuse was better than they had any reason to be uh, this past year in football. And a lot of it was Sean Tucker. Why they didn't run, run Sean Tucker in the second half against Clemson drives me crazy. They should have won that game. Don't get me started. Um, but, uh, yeah, Sean Tucker's a very talented running back. And as somebody that has some shares of Rashad White, I have Sean Tucker in every league that I have Rashad White. And I also have some Sean Tucker in deeper leagues where I'm just chasing some backup running backs with upside because there's a path to Tucker being a viable fantasy starter, but not this week. I think Rashad White holds him off and has a nice game against the Bears. Sticking with the running backs, Jamal Williams, the volume was there for him in week one against the Titans, but the production was not. He had 18 carries for 45 yards, only caught two passes for seven yards. Lawrence, he sees the Panthers this week, so we know how good that Titans front is and you know, kind of TBD as the Panthers have been rebuilding this defense. Yep. No Alvin Kamara still. Kendra Miller's been banged up. Jamal Williams is really the guy there, but does that matter with how little we got from him in week one? It does. It does. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping this open, but a little more reluctant to do that. You feel great about this, Tab? Yeah, I got him at running back 33 to Matthews 29, which that's a, that's a nice little flex play right there. You mentioned it. This week they got the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Tyler Algier has 75 on the ground against them. Bijan Robinson, 10 for 56 against them. So they may be able to, obviously Jamal Williams is not explosive as neither one of those guys, but he'll be able to do, he'll be, he'll have a little more running room this week. And we all know that his value comes with scoring the touchdowns near the goal line. So the Saints should be able to get to that point in this game. So I'm going to keep it open for this, for, for one more week at least. Barry, how are you uh, feeling about this? Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way. Look, running against Tennessee isn't like running against a lot of other teams. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So My friend Dwayne McFarland brought up this point I, uh, on, uh, on his Fantasy Life podcast, which I thought was really smart. He says, I wonder if the reason the Tennessee Titans have been so good against running backs all these years is because – they practice against Derrick Henry. That defense has to play against Derrick Henry. Every, yeah. And so they get out on the field on Sunday. They're like, <laughs> you ain't Derrick Henry. Yeah. This is we, easy. Like, you go learn the date. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> we can like, actually tackle Oh, this Jamal year. Williams. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to Jamal Williams. Like, 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 you, I a just, ra- you a rag dog. Right. I, exactly. I just spent the last three days getting dragged around by Derrick Henry. Right. Like, they, they, I'm already, good. they already bumped and bruised. Coming right, exactly. Like, oh, yeah. this? That's oh, right. Sh- yeah, like it, it reminds me of my kid Connor. So, um, you know, Mike, uh, he's 18 now. He's a freshman at Alabama. But uh, when he was when he was like six, his older brothers were 10 and 12, and that's a big difference, right? Yeah. And so he, but they would just beat him up because it's three boys, right? And they just constantly energy. And so when he finally got on the football field, he's like, whoa. Well, I, these my guys age. my, my yeah, size, yeah, 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 yeah. like, and he There's led nothing. his team in tackles every single year because it was it, for him. It was just like this is nothing. I'm used right. to I'm used to having to defend myself against ten and twelve year olds, right. and so exactly. yeah. um, you know, and uh, you know, and his <laughs> his football team, you know, finished fourth in the state, and so anyway, same sort of thing here. I'm keeping it open on now. The video guys are like, how am I supposed to make a video of that? All right, I got you, video guys. Here you go. Um, clean break here, and I'll just say. I am keeping it open on Jamal Williams. Look, 77% of the team snaps in week one. He was one of only 10 running backs in the NFL to have 20 touches in week one. Obviously, he didn't go very far, but again, that was against Tennessee, as we've talked about. Really hard to move the ball against Tennessee. It's a different situation against Carolina, as Lawrence just mentioned. Algier and Robinson both had huge games against him. Maybe Kendra Miller comes back this week. We'll see, but my expectation here is that He's not really involved in the passing game. There'll still be some Taysom Hill that'll be annoying. Yeah. And and they they seem like, at least in week one, they want to be more passive than we thought with both, with, you know, Alave, a currently healthy Michael Thomas, yeah, and yeah. Rashid Shaheed. So uh, Williams isn't getting as much passing work, but I'm at running back 29. I was a top 30 play. I think he's a flex play with upside this week against the Carolina Panthers. Lawrence, how does this one start to change when – Alvin Kamara comes back and Kendra Miller really starts practicing in full again and this turns into a one-man show all of a sudden into a three-man show. 
it's definitely going to change for Jamal Williams in between the 20s. It'll definitely change for him there, especially when Kamara comes back. Uh, we, I don't think we know if Kendra Miller will come back this week, but it could be as Stevie early Day. as this week. But they, they won't cut. Like, Kendra Miller's not getting 15 touches coming off an injury as a rookie. So that's part of the, another reason why we keep it open. Yeah, and by the way, also think about Alvin Kamara for a second. Like, we don't know if Alvin Kamara is any good anymore. Right. Like, it's been a while since we've seen that dude. And he has, even, even at Alvin Kamara's peak, which I think we can all agree isn't current, uh, happening but even at his peak there was still like Mark Ingram like they still used multiple running backs he's yeah, never been Kenny. he's never been a Derrick Henry type in the sense of like getting like a massive workload yeah. it's always been it's always been screen passes it's always to try to get him in space it's like you know yeah so Jamal Williams and or Kendra Miller maybe later in the season if Jamal doesn't pick it up here but like uh there's still going to be a role for a second running back even if Kamara is better than what we've seen the last 100%. couple of years so, and by the way, we don't know. Like, supposedly. They're still running Tony Jones. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. That's it's like, who they were. Yeah. Right. I mean, just like Kamara's been hurt the last couple of years and supposedly he's fully healthy and, you know, probably a chip on his shoulder, wants to prove himself after, after the suspension. But we don't know, like, until he gets out there. So, I, I just, I don't want to put too many. It's week one, but especially against Tennessee, I just don't want to put too much yeah. um, on, the, uh, on the run game here. Let's see how it plays out against Carolina. Our last a lot better idea next week our last tab on file here guys Dalton Schultz who Ooh. not a big week one CJ Stroud makes Ooh. his debut against the Ravens Schultz targeted four times uh, for two catches and four yards it's not that the pass catchers didn't do anything in this game Stroud was asked to throw and, and threw pretty efficiently for a rookie yeah. overall but for Schultz not a great game and then now he will get the Colts in week two so Barry where does Schultz stack up for you is everybody's kind of looking or maybe a tight end to stream with all the injuries this group. Yeah, I mean, he's a tight end 18 for me this week. Fourth lowest air yards per target among qualified tight ends. He was one of only four tight ends with an 80% snap share. So that was good. He was at least out there. But a less than 10% target share. Dallas Goddard, Cade Otten, Tyler Higby, the other three. Uh, I think I might prefer all of them. Otten is, you know, a borderline there. But, like, there's too many There's too many guys like like Luke Musgrave, like, like Hunter Henry, like um, Sam Hayden Laporta. Hurst. Hayden Hurst, who had a nice game for Carolina. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's a low volume offense. Uh, Stroud struggled to me. He's and by down. the way, by the way, there's other options in that passing game. That's the weird part, Rear, is that just like Bobby Trees got, Bobby Trees, like, and not that I want any part of Robert Woods, but the fact of the matter is that Bobby Trees got like, I think, seven targets off the top of my head, right? And yeah. so, right, and Nico Collins, who I do like a lot, he looked good. My guy Tank Dell, you guys know I'm obsessed with Tank Dell. Tank Dell got four targets in his first. Like, all those guys, Robert Woods isn't more explosive, but, like, those guys are commanding more targets in this offense from a rookie quarterback. I just – it's hard for me to see Dalton Schultz being a big part of a passing offense against, uh, against the Colts. And so you're really going to need a touchdown to pay off. And if you're basically looking for a touchdown-dependent tight end, there's just better bets there, Hunter Henry being one of them. Musgrave, oh, yeah. Laporta, like, uh, you know, any one of these guys. I, I, Zach Ertz. Like, Zach Ertz got double digit targets. Like, I'd prefer him. Like, anyway, so, um, or how about Adam Trotman? We didn't get to this, early, but Greg Dolchitz is going to miss yeah. multiple weeks now. How about Adam Trotman, who was already playing more snaps than Dolchitz to begin with? He's got a tough matchup against uh, Washington this weekend, but, uh, like, Trotman is somebody I would prefer to Dalton Schultz. I'd prefer Logan Thomas. By the way, Logan Thomas came yeah, boy. back. Boy, right? Lo <laughs> I know, you know, guys. I, I love Logan Thomas, but like, a, a tight end is part of what the enemy likes to do on offense. And Logan Thomas had seven targets on Sunday. Speaking, of, uh, I'm gonna keep it close. Speaking of other tight ends who had seven targets, Durham Smythe, the the Dolphins, Dolphins tight end, yeah. and you want that tight end in that offense. They don't even have to run the ball to be successful. Cole Komet. Seven targets. Hayden Hurst, you mentioned him. Seven targets and a touchdown. Kyle Granson from the Colts, he had six targets for them. So, And the Texans are playing the Colts defense, who they had the Jaguars number. Like, they played them tough. That defense is improved. And the Texans is just like they still figuring it out. And Dalton Schultz tied in targets on his team with way too many people for me to want to put him out there in my lineup this week. I think right now when you look at the Texans offense outside of Damian Pierce, honestly, Barry, who could you start? Because to be fair to Stroud, they're missing three players on the offensive line. Yep. They're 
pl trying to get the quick game going with screens to get him comfortable. He was against the Ravens, who they were playing really fast on defense. But, yeah. I mean, is there anybody in this pass game that you even could keep a tab open on right now? Maybe Robert Woods? Is that crazy? I, I'd, I'd prefer Nico, Nico Collins. Yeah, I'd prefer yeah. Nico Collins to Robert Woods. Ideally, you're looking elsewhere. You'd want to see it one more time. You know, Stroud definitely – struggle that was a little bit inconsistent there it'll be easier uh going against the Colts than it was against the Ravens obviously but still um it, it, Pierce is the only one that I feel good about starting this week how about that yeah it's Pierce because you know he's going to get the volume regardless but for me it'll be Nico Collins as well he's the guy that sh that's on your rosters right now probably the first or second guy on your bench that if you need him for a flex you could throw him in here just based on volume alone, and it looks like C.J. Stroud, at least for this early part of the season, they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. With that, we're going to take our last break. When we're back, it is time for Last Call. We are looking at which MVP candidates will have the biggest bounce back in Week 2 after a tough Week 1. Don't you think we've we've elevated to the point where we should be in a better studio? Well, Not that there's anything wrong with this studio. <laughs> But don't you think we should be in a better spot than this room? Well, this uh, is the oh, by the way there, room. There's better studios in this yeah. building. That's yeah. for sure. Why don't we just go use Barry's studio? You think you'd have a problem with that? Uh, I think he would. <laughs> oh, that's oh, well, his studio. Too bad. You just too called bad. him Barry's studio. <laughs> too bad. He's a diva. He's a fantasy <laughs> diva. He's going to be um, like, I don't want four years. There's got to be. There's got to be. down my set. This Shots fired, Barry. I, I would like to address this. <laughs> I would like you were actually ready for that. I, I, would, I would like to address this. Okay, so first off, the idea that Chris Sims, who drives up here in his Tesla, you know, and has Sims his own. a Tesla uh, guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I know Chris that, very well. I did not take him as a Tesla guy. Anyway, so the, the, he, calls me a di he calls me a diva. Like, let's stop there. Like, for example, like, by the way, God bless Florio for actually being in Stanford. Florio has a, um, has a whole compound in West Virginia. I thought that was like, a hologram. There you go. Call him out, man. Call him out. I just, <laughs> just want to say, I, I just want to say, I just want to say, <laughs> say this, that like, listen, I'll make a deal with you guys. I'll make a deal with you guys. So um, uh, if you would like my studio, I'm more than happy to give up my studio. But can I get a home studio like Florio has? Can I um can can I get a little more time? Like Chris Sims is all over football night in America. I got my little like if Chris Sims wants to, you know, I'm more than happy to give up some of my studio space. Yeah, exactly. Where I'm, that's what I'm looking yeah. for, right? You know, if I'll I get a little, GM if I get here, a little yeah. FNIA time, yeah, a thousand percent here. I mean, listen, Chris Sims. Like, I love the idea that Chris Sims is just sort of like, ah, uh, we want to go. Chris Sims broadcasts wherever he wants. Like, you walk into the lobby here. Chris Sims, is, his set's literally in the middle of the building for unbuttoned. Like, the fact of the matter is, Sims does whatever he wants. He's above the law here. Like, was he like that at Bleacher Report? Uh, mm, no. Yeah, you want to say yeah? You want to say yeah? There's a lot of places to go. That's why. Let me <laughs> make this clear. Listen, I love Sims and I love Florio, but, like, their complaints fall on deaf ears, to be perfectly honest with you. Like, the fact of the matter is, look, they've got – Florio's got his whole pro football talk compound. Sims got, he's got unbuttoned. He's all over football night in America. I got a little bar set. That's all I got. <laughs> it's a it's dive all bar. I got. It's a, it's a dive bar. I got a little yeah, yeah, yeah. dive bar set. And now they want to come for this. And I'm the diva, please. We already lost I, Jay Croucher. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I got to share Jay Cro Croucher with, uh, with Bet the Edge. I got to share you with SNY and with um, all the different Big Ten stuff we do. I got to share Lawrence with Roto World. Like, I got nothing. You know what I got? Here's what I got. <laughs> you got I got, blitz. I got, I got yeah, NFL got blitz. blitz. I got NFL blitz, and I got a couple of jerseys. That's what I got. I got and 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 riblets, and I got some Applebee's riblets. That's literally all I got. Like you know, so um, so I don't want to hear it from Florio and Sims. You guys start sharing. Sharing is caring, and then and then maybe there'll be some sharing back, right? That's I fair. Think it's fair. I think yeah, it's fair. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll talk through this to, to yeah. be continued. Lawrence, you're, Lawrence you're, you're a father. How would you settle this? How would you settle this if, the, if these were your kids? Uh, well, if they, if, were, if they were my personal kids, then yes. I probably wouldn't be sharing. You yeah. Know, I'd just be like, yeah, I'm No, good. but if your kids I, were fighting, like the way that uh, oh, Flora oh, and oh, Sims oh. and I. Yeah, mm, like, that's I'm tough. asking you to mediate here. Yeah, that, that you had to give a little, take a little, man. You can't be, you know, you can't play favorites, man. So, you know, hey, like you said, hey, you share the studio. You know, yeah. then let them hook you up. You I'm good. just saying. I'm just, you know, I'm just, just saying here. Or the older gets the dibs. Mm -hmm. You can do it like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Let's, with that, let's dive into the NFL MVP odds, courtesy of our friends at DraftKings. And listen, let's not sugarcoat it, guys. For plenty of these guys, not a great week one. Mahomes still at the top of the board here at plus 700. Tua soars. He's tied with Mahomes to win the MVP at plus 700. Joe Burrow, one of his worst games, he's at plus 750. Josh Allen, same story, plus 800. Jalen Hurts, plus 1,000. Justin Herbert, plus 1,200. Lamar Jackson, plus 1,500. And the last one on the board there, Trevor Lawrence, at plus 1,500. So when you look at this, Barry, who are you betting on to have the biggest bounce back this weekend that could maybe shoot them off the board a little bit more? I mean, I think, listen, I'm buying the dip, as it were, on Burrow, Allen, and Hurts. Those guys were, you know, among the top quarterbacks that went off the board in fantasy drafts this year for a reason. Burrow was Burrow was a little bit rusty. Bad day at the office for him. Same, same with Hurts. Josh Allen, like, Jets are a really tough defense. Yeah. Like, you're not going to see four turnovers. Like, I'm in on all those guys. If anyone wants to, uh, wants to, you know, trade them to me at, you know, slightly below market value, I'm in. They'll both be totally fine. And so, yeah, I like those odds as well because those odds are reflective of a poor week one, which I don't expect that to happen. What about you, Lawrence? Who's, who's bouncing back? Yeah, so group? of any of those guys on the screen, I think, to be honest, I think every single one of them will perform better than what they did and we won, except obviously two of them. That right. was a godlike <laughs> performance there. That's hard to top. Hey, he might just top it. I don't know. He got Tyree Hill out there. But I want to talk about Lamar and Burrow real quick. I think these two, this time around, I think they get into a shootout. Lots of points here. It comes down to the wire just like it did last year, the last time these two teams met, except neither Lamar nor Burrow lit it up that day. But think about it, for Lamar and Joe Burrow, this was their preseason game right here. These two didn't play in the preseason. You had Patrick Mahomes, he got some reps. Josh Allen had preseason reps. The other guys had some reps. Jalen Hurts too, he'll come back. He's gonna light up the Vikings. So I, I like those guys to bounce back in the major way. And, you know, maybe we'll see the odds shake up a little bit, but if they all come back, I like it to stay as is. Guys, for me, because of the matchup, Josh Allen's going to have a monster week two against yeah. the Raiders. I mean, I understand everybody's up in arms over the turnovers. Three interceptions could have thrown more if C.J. Mosley catches that one, the big fumble. Oh, yeah. The Raiders are a big step down from the Jets' defense. If you have Josh Allen in fantasy, you'll get a huge bounce back in week two. Yeah, I mean, if I have to pick one of them, I guess I'll say Jalen Hurts. Just again, on Thursday night, we talked about this. Running backs banged up. Vikings defense, they struggled against uh, Baker Mayfield last week. Jalen knows he didn't play well. So, yeah, so give me Jalen Hurts to bounce back. But I agree, all of them will have a monster game. Listen, it's closing time, which means you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Jay Croucher hopefully is done with his bet cast. He'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> For Connor Rogers and Lawrence Jackson. Happy birthday to your daughter, Lawrence. Yes, I'm Matthew sir. Barry. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, respectfully respectfully, okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.